Welcome everybody to this little, say, experiment with um, uh, teaching you through WhatsApp and drum gurus. I'm excited to do that. And um, I will prepare three different videos for you with uh, some sort of technical groundwork, of I, which I think is simple but not easy. Um, there will also be a little clip about some basic molar, molar technique um, connected with uh, some independence. And there will be a little section with, uh, with some extra exercises on the six foot rate. More of that later. So the, the first video, which is this one here, is about some technical groundwork and some frequently asked questions. I mean, question number one, how do you hold your sticks, Klaus? First of all, I just, I mean, imagine you throw the stick and you catch it. And what usually happens inside your hand is you catch the stick like so. I think nobody actually gets the idea of catching a stick between forefinger and thumb. And at, I mean, at times I hold my sticks like that, but not that often. And I'm just saying it's one out of many, many different options that you uh, That's one important thing. The other thing is, uh, of course, you have these three different hand positions, which are actually just hand positions, not the ways to hold the stick. The German timpani, the American grip, and the French timpani with thumbs on top. And uh, all of these three can work with whatever way you choose of where the grip, where the fulcrum actually is. And there's a lot of room for variation here. And if somebody tells you there's only one way to do it, run the other way. That's at least what my most important mentor, Jim Chapin, used to say whenever somebody was bringing up that statement. There's only one way to hold the stick. It's not true. Don't believe it. Okay. So another aspect which is, uh, which is totally underrated is uh, being in control of the amount of pressure inside your hand, the, the amount of tension that goes into how you hold the stick. There's a little experiment which you all can do that, and I personally like to do it with, hand, with sticks just in my fist like so. So when you, do, uh, when you see me do this, all I actually do is moving my arms up and down. My fingers are not working. My wrist is not working. It's just my arm that moves up and down. And once I'm applying less tension in my fist, check out what happens. I have the double strokes here. And if I reduce the tension, I get flabs. But you would see no obvious difference in the way I Say, choose my techniques. Less tension makes the stick rebound further, so you have more distance between the notes, while more tension will result in uh, less rebound, so the notes are located closer together, which produces the double stroke, or with less tension, the flat. All I actually did was I made a change from here to here. It's that much. So being in control of that is a very important thing. So uh, the core of this first lesson actually is an exercise which is taken from my uh, from my DVD drum in Cairo, and it's called Serious Move. It combines certain mechanics that you know from the molar technique, applying the wave-like motion, and it also uses full and half strokes. Yep. So imagine the basic pulse is here. One, two, three, four. The first measure is this. And the important part is you never hold down the stick. You always let the stick react. That's the first measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The second measure is 
gonna be this. Only four strokes. Check it out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The third measure is the opposite of the first. Playing first the upstroke, then the downstroke using the wave-like motion of the molar wave. One, two, three, Hi. four. One, I'm two, three, four. Right. Four. And, I just and the fourth measure these is symbols. all tell you what they are. low strokes. With the high hats, we have the 16 symbols. Check this out. Medium with the hats. Low but underneath strokes. it is the Actually generation X, 12 inch. So all four bars in sequence right here we have will be this first exercise. Classic custom 12 One, here we two, trash three, three, four. On the top whip, we have the whip, 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 full stroke. The visor is 10 inch extra dry splash. Whip, and on top of it we have the visor is low hand splash. Here at the bottom we have the visor. Down, generation down, X, down, 14 down, inch, stroke. and then on the top we have the up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Over here we have the you can use both hands, Vintage track full, track. underneath whip, we have the whip, 12 inch full stroke, custom splash on top of whip, the bison, whip, vintage whip, crash. whip, whip, low stroke, of the bison, vintage whip, 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 full stroke, whip, 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 low stroke. You can isolate your right hand, whip, 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 full stroke, whip, 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 low stroke, and stop. Yep. So far with some basic technical groundwork of which I think it's, it may look easy, but it's not easy and it's super important because it spreads out to most everything that you play on the drums. Got it? See you in the next video. All right, back in action, guys, uh, with a third lesson, which is about the six-stroke roll. And uh, I mean, first of all, this here is not a six-stroke roll. It's actually, hmm, it's it's based on the six-stroke roll, but the the true six-stroke roll, per se, per definition, uh, in its proper shape, would be this. and not, it's just a variation of that, but it's not the original rudiment. So this, uh, this sheet of exercises that I'm gonna play now for you, and I will also forward that in the WhatsApp group, uh, always shifts back and forth between um, 16 notes, hand to hand. One, two, three, four. And then the exercises A, B, C, D, and E. I'll just play that through for you. You will notice I'm using the wave-like motion from the molar whip to produce the accents. I'm staying super relaxed on all the doubles, so I'm not fighting like hell to, in order to bring the doubles out. I just let the stick react as much as I can, and I try to apply as much as I can from the molar whip to produce the accents, okay? So at a slow tempo, starting out with the 60 notes and then moving into exercise A is this. One, two, one, and two, and. One, two, one, and two, and into A. Sixteenth notes and one more time, letter A. Sixteenth notes. I'm now changing to C. C. And one more time. Let us see. And now switching to E. Notice it's still the same six stroke roll pattern all the way around. E still. And now switching to G, which is. And one more time, letter G. Now 
out to uh, letter B, which is difficult. Because we're actually on a 32nd note grid now. And now switching to a D. One more time, letter D. I know it's difficult. to F. Check this out. And one more time, F. And now the last one, letter H. Last time around for and. Okay, so in the in the second column, in the right in the right side column, you also see some some drum set adaptations out of that, which would be uh, uh, say with letter C, for instance, something like this. Let's say a little bit of F maybe to to come up with with a more challenging one. Here's F. But underneath it is the generation. Right here we have the bottom classic custom twelve and eight pass and on the top we have the twenty two and by the ten inch extra dry splash. So, again, six-stroke roll, a very common tool in modern contemporary drum set playing. So I hope you like those variations, which are not that common and not a few people are using these. Although I find they are super interesting and they also help to widen your rhythmic horizon, let's say. Okay, I'm open to your questions. I will forward these, uh, these three bits in the, in the WhatsApp group along with some little piece of notation. Uh, so you can download and study that. Feel free to, to please follow me on Instagram, sign up to my YouTube channel and, uh, and connect with me um, and spread the word about what I do. I have a couple of books around, Open Handed Playing Volume 1 and 2, with Hudson Music, with Alfred Music. There's a lot of educational sources. You can find more of these in my link tree on my Instagram profile, Klaus Hessler, uh, C-L-A-U-S-H-E-S-S-L-E-R. Uh, thanks so much for your attention and uh, be safe, enjoy drumming and I hope you're all doing well. Stay healthy and, uh, and all the best for you down there, okay? Thanks so much, bye-bye. Hi there, Klaus Hessler back again with uh, the next lesson. It's a basic molar technique slash independence exercise that works great on, the, on just the pad, but it also, it also spreads out to most anything that you can do on the drums in the very same way. So molar technique actually goes back to, uh, to the name of the teacher of my teacher, Sanford Augustus Moller. Uh, Jim Chapin, my teacher, was the master student of Sanford Moller, who gave the technique its name, molar technique, long story short. Um, so. Uh, I mean, there is a strong history with Mola technique coming from Europe and ancient, say, military drumming in the broadest sense. That got exported to the New World and uh, played during the Revolutionary War in, in the 1700s and then also in the Civil War in the 1800s in the, in the United States. Um, 
And uh, one very basic exercise that I do many times with uh, the students, especially if, uh, if there are certain weak spots with reading music, is you just pick a group of two notes, one accent and one soft note, and you perform that using different qualities of pulse underneath it and you play a song against it or the rhythm of a song, the melody of a song, of a song with your other hand. Yep. So the song I will pick today is Jingle Bells. I know it's, it's, a, it's a far cry from Christmas still, but chances are you know the song and you, you can also pick any other song that, that you're aware of. The main, the major, main important thing is um, you always maintain the strong pulse and you always maintain that wave-like motion in which you always let the stick rebound. You never, never do this. It may still have that wave-like movement, but it's actually no molar technique at all, seriously. If somebody tells you something else, don't believe it, <laughs> honestly. Um, now, here is uh, the ostinato. Producing the accent on the downbeat. And here's jingle bells. Check this out. One, two, three, four. And so forth. You can improvise on the melody, no problem with that. Just make sure the pulse always stays solid and this here stays rock solid as well, okay? Um, with a, a good difference between the loud stroke and the soft stroke. And the hard thing is not to apply tension. Okay, so here's the next phrase, which is the same pattern but differently organized on the pulse, which is now this. This is still one, two, three, four. And the pattern here is the accent on the second beat of the 16th note grid and the soft note on the fourth beat of the, trip, uh, of the 16th note grid plus the jingle bells. Check this out. third option is um, still the shifting the, the hand pattern one sixteenth note further, which makes you play plus the jingle bells, one, two, three, four. And option number four. Okay, and so forth. Uh, check this out. Switch the hands, play the ostinato from here. And do the same thing with your left hand, okay? See in the next video. <laughs> Over here we have the Bizans 20 inch vintage trash crash. Underneath we have the 12 inch classic custom splash on top of the Bizans vintage crash. And this is the 20 inch.